True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, hello, kids. We have a very, very special guest and a great treat for you today. Our guest is a legend of North American broadcasting with a 40-plus year radio and television career as a national talk show host. And his career has taken him to Boston, Tampa, Montreal, Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto, London, Hamilton, Winnipeg. He's been everywhere, man. (laughs) And while in Boston, he only snagged himself a Best TV host for New England Emmy? Yeah. Only. Yeah, just like I said, legend, right? So, and now you can find him sharing his wisdom every Monday on Ryan Jesperson's Real Talk podcast, and as of today, in columns in the Winnipeg Free Press. Shall we bring him on in? Absolutely. Welcome, sir, Charles Adler. It's uh, great to see you guys. Uh, I've uh, heard lots of your stuff, and uh, everybody I, I know that I respect in this business is a lot of respect for you, so I'm uh, thrilled oh. that uh, you invited oh. me. Well, thank, oh, you. thank you. That's news to us. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I, you know, it's interesting. I don't want to dwell on, you know, sideshow business, but um, it, regardless of, of what you do in this world, one of the great things about uh, this business, it doesn't matter, podcast, radio, television, mm-hmm. you know, columns, whatever, uh, is you actually had, you have no idea who you're touching out there. Now, the most important, I mean, we, you know, it's nice to get the strokes from the pros and, yeah. and all of that. I give you that. Um, but... <laughs> As far as the the people who matter most, you know, real people, ordinary people, regular people, the people who who count on us to unburden ourselves and identify with them if we're doing it right, um, you just never know who you're going to touch. And that's uh, the most amazing thing about uh, what my life has been like ever since I was, uh, I guess, 18 18 years old. So we're talking about a 50-year career. Uh, You mentioned uh, about between 30 and 40 of it uh, doing talk. But of all the things that tickle my fancy the most, it's finding out from people in all parts of the world, certainly all parts of Canada, the States, but all parts of the world, hey, I heard you do this, and, 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 and my uncle heard this, and my aunt heard that, and, and she was you know, sick in the hospital when, when you said something that really motivated her. I mean, when you hear people say things like, you, you said something uh, that my mother was listening to 25 years ago, and it motivated her to stay alive. Mm-hmm. That's not, you know, show business hype. Uh, that's actually understating. Uh, over the years, in the old days, of course, with snail mail and then email came in, like thousands and thousands of people in, in, in all parts of the world, once again, mostly the states in Canada, uh, telling you that whatever it is you're doing really matters to them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We, we, we're relatively new at this, and I mean, we we felt it. Yeah, we, we we call the people who listen to our, us kits and cubs, and uh, <laughs> they're they're really amazing. Oh, you know, they, they just give us so much. It's it's re- the oh. love is ridiculous. Put, putting so, aside, you know, people talk about information and opinion and political this. I mean, people don't like to say this, but their feelings are what matter, and their yes. feelings are craving authentic, real, genuine, heartfelt companionship. I don't want to get too deeply into the business of the pandemic, except to say that many people in the pandemic literally lost their friends for all sorts of reasons. I'm not just talking about, you know, people dying. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that they they stopped communicating with them. The different political opinions were, were, were formed. They hardened and people divorced each other. 
people left members of their their families and and people lost a lot of friends and so all of that uh combined creates this enormous appetite out there for what you guys are doing well thank you thank um, you yeah it's uh it's very satisfying to know that we're, we're able to reach out and and make contact with people across the country uh, and in some cases around the world we have we have uh, viewers and listeners in australia as well and and making that genuine connection and one of the things we love about this medium is the instant connection we get with them because they're in the chat like there's we have a live chat window rolling when when we go live we have a live chat and we can interact with what they're saying right then and there live and i'm like this is so cool. You know, in radio, you could have callers calling in, but there's a limitation in what they can say or do. But in the chat, they can say whatever they want. We don't like them. We can boot them real easy. We, inter <laughs> we tend to interact with them. Every now and then we'll get the porn bots will come in and try and sell us pornography. And I'm like, no, we're just going to have to ban the bot. But <laughs> it, it really is a great way to connect with the average person anywhere in the world instantly. Yeah. Well, you know, you talk about, uh, you know, what's real and uh, immediate and real time. And the prop, one of the problems, there are many problems with talk radio. There are many good things about talk radio. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to bite the, the, had the, had the hand that generously fed me for, for a long time. However, there, everything's got its limits and everything's got its particular virtues and vices. Many people who call into a radio show seem to be far more nervous it doesn't matter why they just are they're far more nervous about being on the air and sometimes they are not as authentic as they are in this particular platform this platform is more real in a number of ways but the most important way you know we can talk about what we do the most important way it's real is that for people who are our guests for whatever reason mm -hmm. they are more themselves here than they are on on radio yeah I wonder why that is. Is it because maybe we've become so used to having like Zoom calls or Teams meetings or things like that over the last, like, I mean, that's such a part of our life today that it wasn't necessarily 10 or 15 years ago. Do you it's think exactly, that might be it's, it? it's exactly it. Uh, people are, whether people are doing Zoom calls with their, with their parents, their kids, it doesn't matter. This is normal. Mm -hmm. And talk radio was, was not normal for people. That's why, for instance, uh, I mean, it's a, different people compile the statistics differently, but in general, no more than five to seven to eight. It's always like less than 10% of people who listen to your show, radio show, will ever call in. And mm -hmm. so no matter how much you want very, very badly not to turn the show over to, you know, the same listeners, the same mm -hmm. callers, God bless them all. But, you know, you, you want to always expand. And so very often radio shows, and it doesn't, doesn't matter what the size of the market is, large market, small, medium, doesn't matter sometimes have the same people on often mm -hmm. and the listener ends up going oh yeah that's that's george right. uh, george hates uh, squirrels and now george yeah. is gonna waste another five minutes of our time you know what i'm saying um there's a there's a, a tedium uh, there that's built in and sometimes unfortunately in talk radio that also caused many shows not to grow their audiences of people under the age of 80 or 70 or 60 or 50, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever it was, uh, it was very hard in talk radio for many people to grow a young audience because I don't have to tell you when you're 25 and 35 and the people who are on the radio sound like, you know, uncle Ebenezer who, <laughs> who you see at Christmas uh, for an, an hour or two. And then you don't see him again for, for, for a year. And, but, but if you turn the radio on and it's, it's Uncle Ebenezer followed by Uncle Ezekiel followed by, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and they're yeah. all saying the same thing. They're, they're all angry about the world as it is right now. Yeah. Uh, they want to turn back the hands of time and hosts. And this is also nothing to do with Canada, the States, Britain, Australia, whatever. Hosts want to be kind to the people who are calling in. Mm -hmm. And so the hosts affirm them. So what happens when the hosts affirm them? Another Ezekiel calls him, yeah. you know, yeah. and it, it becomes, you know, Woodstock. Uh, for 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 people who want some attention, God bless them once again. You mm -hmm. know they're seniors, uh, they're octogenarians, and it becomes impossible when that's your content to attract younger people. I realize that some people watching and listening this go, you know, Chuck is being a, an ageist. Well, I'm not being an no. ageist. Hell, I'm you know I'm I'm not I'm not 55 anymore. Um, I understand what this is like. I you know I understand that. Many of my neighbors are are the Ezekiels, if you will, mm -hmm. and 
And the thing is that I can't afford, because of the, the business that I love so much, I can't afford to become like that. Right. I can't afford right. to become someone who just wants to listen to the oldies all day. Mm -hmm. I love the old folks. I love my 89-year-old mother and all of that. But I want to always reach, just like you do, as many people as possible. And sometimes that means that you can't just sit there and, and babysit somebody for 10 or 15 minutes and lose your entire audience. So, yes, I had a reputation uh, many years ago uh, for being um, a bit you know, ageist. Because mm -hmm. I would tell people, you know, very, very bluntly, I, I love having you on, Martha, but I want your grandkids as well. And uh, right. and 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 I, I I've got to go now. You know, like uh, call again, yeah. call call. Uh, you know, a year from now. But there were other hosts who were okay with Martha calling in every goddamn day, and right. uh, that's something yes. that you're not doing on this platform. No. And so none of that will affect uh, the growth of this platform. You have much more control over. Who you're sharing the screen with mm -hmm. completely agree and yeah. one of the things that i think we 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 really uh we've not taken for granted we've been very grateful for is how willing everybody that we've had on just to, to sit and and be open and interact with us like you are right now we're just we're having a conversation right and and this is something like you just said people can connect we feel a connection that way well, it's, 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 it's interesting how many people uh, in their lives, no matter how many uh, friends uh, they have, uh, require an honest conversation. They're, they're, there's, a, there's a conversation deficit, especially, especially because of the political world we're in where everything gets torqued. And, you know, George starts calling Sally woke and yeah. Sally tells him to F off, you know, and... And and when you're when you're living that kind of a world, um, it gets lonesome. I, I got to mm -hmm. be brutally honest with you. For for, for people who want to live that kind of, and of course politically, uh, the more lonesome people are, uh, the more on edge they are, the more anxiety they have, and then politically, unfortunately, those people are then targeted by you know some of the right wing nut jobs who use these people and get them to buy into their ideology and sometimes buy a whole lot of other merchandise as well. There's nothing a hate hustler loves more True. than a lonely person uh, who's doubting uh, themselves and doubting where the world is going, filled with anxiety. You know, Fox loves to have that crowd. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of people that, that uh, we know that we deal with every day in the, the political movement on the, on the far right. And uh, that is fodder for them. And uh, sometimes I'm reluctant to, you know, sound like I'm putting them down, not the guys who are hustling them, but mm -hmm. the people being hustled. Sometimes I'm reluctant about that because I figure these people have enough anxiety. So I end up focusing on, on the leaders uh, right. who are doing this to them, not, not the followers who, who are, for the most part, very good people who are unfortunately uh, not having genuine conversations with people who genuinely love them. Yeah. I, when you're talking about that, it just makes me think of, you know, a saying with which I grew up all the time because I used to be very, very obstinate as a child because, and I used to really like to be right. And you had to know that I was right. <laughs> and I had to give that up at one point because the cost of being right is being alone often. All the time. Yeah. And then you become prey. Yeah. And you know, it's like, very well said. it's just, they're, they're sitting ducks out there. Mm -hmm. They're sitting ducks. Yeah, out there, like yeah. Um, it's um, we're. I, I've never everything you're saying, every syllable of what you're saying. I have a stronger sense of that in 2023 than I did in 2013 or 23 or or mm -hmm. 1983. Uh, and God, I, I just hope, I just hope it turns around. I. I, I, I I don't know what normal is anymore. They tell me this is the new normal. I really I would like, like to, I, I'm not pretending that, you know, we can go back to the era of the Flintstones. I'm not talking about going back hundreds of years. And even mm -hmm. when I say the Flintstones, a lot of people are going, Flintstones? What the hell is he? <laughs> What's this old guy yapping about? There was a, a cartoon for many, many years. And it was a it was satire, but it was a cartoon. And it was about what the world was like many, many years ago. It actually was... Uh, a parody of the modern world, but they, but the way they did the parody was they were, 
they were they were they were you know they had cavemen and cave cave women and it was really really funny when i say back to the days of the flintstones i'm not trying to go back to the stone age here uh, that's just not possible but i wouldn't mind i wouldn't mind winding it back to what life was like Five years, that's all I'm asking for. Five years before the pandemic hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, hit. Mm -hmm. So less than 10 years ago, that, I'm not asking for much. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 hear, I hear you. There's lots of things since the pandemic. I mean, the pandemic, it's its own, its own entity. There's a lot of people that have forgotten things. Like I, I remember when people started socializing again, there were lots of women reporting that certain men forgot where their hands should be when they're in bars anymore after not oh being gosh. in bars for two, three years. There's a lot of teachers that have complained that uh, a lot of students forgot how to take notes because everything was PowerPoints and slides. And, you know, just weird, interesting little things, but, but things have changed, right? And you have a whole bunch of people who have been alone and mm -hmm. You know, and have been separated. A lot of people have missed key moments in, in life. Right? My partner was doing a PhD, but finished in 2020. He didn't get to ring the bell. He didn't graduate that year. You know, two years later, when he finally got to graduate, not everybody showed up. You know, wasn't, I mean, you finished a PhD. Yeah. <laughs> Right, balloon was deflated by the you, time. You would that think that you'd get to celebrate that moment, but that it, it didn't happen that much, right? People, people, people died. I mean, uh, people died over, over the, those two years, the, the, the pandemic, and you know, I'm just saying, roughly, roughly two years, but two really intense years. And uh, you know, I get uh, the most dramatic stuff. I would get, I would get in off the air and DMs and people who wanted to have a personal conversation because of what they were experiencing an email and obviously we had people calling in to the show as well but you know uh, you know when a, when a person says to you uh you know that they they've just lost their mom but they're not allowed to have a, a funeral for her mm -hmm. um that they hadn't been able to visit her for the last few weeks or, or the last uh, few months or they could just go up to the window and you know, um, hopefully get them to some kind of laptop so they could maybe FaceTime. Um, and, and you know, you, you have, you have, frankly, an entire generation traumatized. Now, I am not a psychologist or psychiatrist, and uh, I have no idea how much psychological impact there was and how much actual trauma there was. I don't have any sense of that. I just know what I heard on, on, on the phone. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, there were certain meetings that were arranged, uh, you know, to have coffee with, with, with certain people. And, and, and it was horrible. I mean, there, there were, and, it, and the dependency people then, depending on the person that, that's listening, the person giving them an ear. I mean, you have no idea. I mean, there, there were, there were people, who were so lonely to talk to someone who had their ear that, yeah, they'd want to get on FaceTime with me. But but some of these people were going, you know, is there any way that we could could fly you in so that you could speak to, you know, my son about this? Because my my son, who is the grandson of someone who just died, he's he's devastated and he's not he's not eating, he's not sleeping. You know, can, can we get you in here to, to talk to him? And you know, I, I mean, there's only. There's only so much you can do. And I say, well, I'll be happy to talk to him on the phone. I'll be happy to talk to him on Zoom. I'll be happy to talk to him. Oh, well, could you please fly in here? And, you know, and um, I'm not saying that that happened every day, but there were a number of people like that. But, you know, whatever the numbers are, when that's going on in your ear, when, when I'm experiencing something in people that I have never experienced before, um, a, a feeling of absolute de desperation, uh, you know, it's telling you that you're now in a different era, you know, in the calendar, we've got, you know, generally BC and AD, you know, be before Christ and, and, and after, after his death, that's kind of how most of us in the Western world uh, relate when it comes to a calendar. And I think that we are living before pandemic and after pandemic. Now for, for, for kids who are being born now and, you know, 10 or 15 years from now, you know, they'll be hearing about some people talking about the pandemic and to them, it'll be very, very abstract. I, I don't like to think I envy anyone, but I do. Hmm. I envy the people who are born post pandemic, who will have absolutely no memory mm -hmm. of what hmm. life was like in what we think of as normal times. Right. 
one of my friends, right. his uh, son was born in 2020. So at two years of age in 2022, he'd not seen any other humans other than his parents and a doctor. That's it. Yeah. So, you know, this, uh, this uh, autumn, they were out for a walk and he was in the stroller and he's just kind of freaked out by seeing all like what what's with all these things these like he couldn't understand people you know at two years of age he just didn't get it watching television is one thing but that's not real but when you see real human beings in the world and you've never seen them before it was a bit of a shock to his system so i think we're going to have a generation of of children of the corn if you will yeah quarantine children of the corn who will uh have serious lack of um uh, Social skills, perhaps uh, a lack of uh, a, a lack of something. We, you know, none of us are you know medical or professionals, and you know what I, I say that, and not because I want to fake humility. But I honestly don't know. But I'll tell you this: I don't think most of the medical professionals know either. I just no. think that uh, uh, it's it's fair to presume that some people are going to have greater problems than others, but we can assume that many people will have problems. Yes. Yeah, because we're only going to find out what happens. That's the thing, right? That with a novel virus, it's not happened before. Mm -hmm. We're going to you know, find out. You know, right? we've got a situation right now where you, we got we got we got uh, street crime, right? People are being attacked on the street. People are being attacked on the buses. You had uh, you know Pierre Polyev doing his usual. It's all about Justin Trudeau. It's all <laughs> it was, you know Justin Trudeau's compelling people to stab people in buses and and anyway that day, frankly that 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 sort of rot that hustle gets boring but i ask myself the question uh, you know uh, you know because i'm not into this everything is just and true as well that, that's just it's too it's too mindless and and i like i say too much of a, a hustle so i ask myself i wonder if because I, I, I don't have an i don't have an answer this i just have to go i wonder how much of this is a consequence of the pandemic mm. I, 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 I you guys do you think about that at all? Like, I mean, we've yes. got we've got things going on right now that don't make any bloody sense. There's a bunch of people who are decidedly not being kind to each other when kindness is required. I, yeah. I think some people have lost the ability to. There's been there, there's been so much pain, so much suffering, so much loss up to the greatest losses loss of life mm -hmm. loss of people we love dear but a whole bunch of loss milestones just you name it all the things in life you know there, 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 are people, there, there are kids who have missed prom there are people who have missed you know 25th anniversary celebrations there are people who have missed weddings there are people who have missed funerals there are people you know they got a promotion but there was no dinner to celebrate it you know or you couldn't go out to celebrate it with your partner or you know just all these things there was so much loss if if we can't if we can't engage uh and you know i'll just use the word uh, muscle here you know everything's a muscle a memory muscle no such thing as a memory muscle but muscle works well for this um the the most important muscle that we have is empathy mm -hmm. there's like zero doubt about that uh, and some people because of the lack of engagement okay uh their empathy muscle has become dormant there they, they you know you got to use it or lose it and when you're not using it for a couple of years i'm not saying everybody mm -hmm. but a substantial number of people and you know we can talk about uh, some of these people who are committing these crimes they're they're over the edge to begin with obviously it's a nice way of of, of putting it i guess they're over the edge there you know there's something something not right but i honestly ask myself the question okay so they, maybe they haven't been right in a couple of years but i just wonder if the pandemic made them even even less right. Well, mm -hmm. but that's that's what I'm wondering because if you if you're having all this right, they always say that anger usually comes from unresolved sadness. So if you have all this loss and you have all this sadness and nobody's connecting and nobody has anybody to talk to, so the sadness is unresolved and it's been festering, and now we're getting back together and we're not our best selves. No. At this point, that we're we're reintegrating at this moment, we're not no, our best selves. No, no, we're not, and I don't know. I have, I have no way of knowing when we're getting back to something something better. Well, and the lack of empathy was on clear display a year ago here where I live in Centertown, Ottawa, 
when they occupied my neighborhood for three weeks. And somebody said, you should be empathetic towards them. I'm like, why aren't they empathetic towards me? I can't sleep at night. Uh, you know, I had compassion I, I, for some I, of them because they, they threw their lives away for nothing. And I, right. I felt compassionate towards them. But I, didn't, I couldn't empathize with people who uh, thought that occupying the national, the, the, the center, downtown center core of the Canada's capital, a, a G7 capital city, how can I empathize with people who want to take over a city? I can't. And they refuse to show us empathy. Well, and, 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 and here, and just to take it uh, further, because, you know, you're in Ottawa and I'm not, and Douglas is not, um, the lack of empathy in various parts of Canada, the total lack of empathy for people, whether they're old or young, whether they've mm -hmm. got kids or not, whether they've got animals, the total lack of empathy for those people who are being invaded Mm -hmm. And, 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 and uh, like, how difficult is it for, for people to understand that if you've got one guy, you know, with the, with the car alarm that's gone off and it doesn't want to shut up, uh, okay, so that's a mechanical issue and you hope that it shuts up uh, sooner or later. But to know that there are not, it's not a mechanical thing, that there are many guys who are actively honking those, those truck horns, those transport horns, in the middle of the night, oh, yeah. like, and they just keep honking and honking. And, you know, how is it that people outside of Ottawa, many of them, don't think, don't think that's a big deal? They, they go along with this, well, these guys, uh, you know, they're, they're, the country's not, not free anymore, and they're, they're, trying to, they're liberating the country. It's about freedom. And I'm thinking, I'm positive that years earlier, if those same people had been forced to watch a movie about this, you know, mm -hmm. just a fiction thing, they'd go, that's the most ridiculous thing in the world. Well, why, that doesn't make any... That doesn't make any sense. That couldn't happen in the real world. So what made people lose that empathy? Yeah. The pandemic must have had something to do with it. It has to have. Yeah. Can't, well, can't be. Other. It's the elephant in the room. I mean, the, you know, the elephant is crapping all over the carpet. Uh, I can't pretend the elephant's not in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it yeah. was during, during the POEC when they, you know, they were interviewing uh, Rat King, who went on about how, you know, we were tired of three years of lockdowns. Okay, I, I don't remember three years of lockdowns, number one. I don't remember actually ever being locked down. I was able to come and go as I pleased. Sure, I couldn't go to the pub because that was closed. I could go to the grocery store. I could go for a walk in the park. I could sit in my friend's porch. I was never locked down. So, number one, that's a fallacy. But number two, the way he just went on and on and on about how, you know, I couldn't visit my friends in the hospital. My father almost died during the pandemic while he was in the hospital and I couldn't go visit him, but I didn't decide to park in front of somebody's house, blow my horn, defecate on their lawn and scream at them for wearing a mask because I'm an adult. Yeah. And you've got no, nothing to apologize for. That's what adults do. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> you, you know, sometimes life is not pleasant. And guess what? Life has to go on. But I'm not blaming somebody else for, for all the ills and, and, and bad things that happened to me in my life. There's nobody to blame but me. I blame myself for anything bad that's ever occurred to me. I've put myself in a position to be there. That's my fault. It's on me. And, and I, the pandemic, that's not on me. You know, having businesses shut down, that's not on me. Having quarantines, having masks, none of that is on me. But it's like, okay, these are the rules. I'll play by them because I'm a member of society and I care about my fellow human beings. And if, if public health is saying, you need to wear a mask out in public, okay, no problem. I, I, what's the big issue? Suddenly they, they saw that as an invasion of their freedom. Uh, we're asking you to, the, to do the bare minimum. Uh, uh, to protect your fellow human beings, and they couldn't do that. Well, see, the thing was is that what nobody seemed to acknowledge throughout the entire pandemic is that it wasn't about freedom. Mm -hmm. It was about one freedom versus another freedom. Your freedom to go out to a public place without a mask during a high pandemic where people are dropping like flies versus my risk to not contract a potentially deadly disease just by virtue of the fact that I want to have a slice of apple pie out in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. 
right? Yep. So yeah. it, it's it's competing freedoms. Everybody, yeah. it's freedom. And like, and if you don't do this, you're not freedom. No, it's competing freedoms, right? It's that whole your right to swing your fist ends where my nose begins. Sure. You have the right to do this. You don't have the right to do this. Well, I want the right to do that. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't have it. <laughs> I'm well, sorry. Well, I think well, you've mistaken me for somebody who doesn't respect myself. Because well, you know, I'm not going to let you have that right. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're, you're absolutely right. Look, I, I don't know whether people uh, aren't being taught this in, in school, but the term social contract, mm -hmm. you know, yes. uh, we, we, all of us have um, an obligation to each other. And this came up the other day when a woman from Alberta was, was on uh, Twitter because she was responding to another woman in Alberta, a, a politician, talking about how the people who are getting heart attacks have got to become more accountable. <laughs> what? Yeah, because they've, they're, 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 you know, some of them haven't taken care of themselves. You know, they've, they, they, they've smoked or they're fat or there's something, but those people have got to be accountable. And, you know, she says she's a nurse. She was a nurse. She was one of the nurses that didn't want to get vaccinated. And so, you know, she, so she, she left nursing for a while. Anyway, she's now a candidate. She's a conservative, United Conservative Party uh, candidate in, 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 in the rural riding in Alberta. Anyhow, um, she went on and on about how these, uh, these people, these people, they've got to become uh, more accountable. And so one of the people living not very far from her uh, got on social media talking about how it's tough enough. She's been in treatment for breast cancer for a year now. And she says, it's tough enough to go through all of that. And it's, it's tough because you're also beating up on yourself. You're blaming yourself for getting the cancer. Everyone who's had cancer and other diseases and everyone who's got someone in the family, this is talk about authentic. This is so authentic. This is the worst part of any kind of illness where you start to blame yourself for being ill. Mm -hmm. So she said, you know, when, when I'm going through this anyway, when I'm blaming myself, the last thing I need is a so-called healthcare professional blaming me. It's the last thing in the world I need. And so I just said, look, I, I just said to her, uh, we have a, an obligation toward each other. Uh, a, a social contract is, is what it was called when, when I learned about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I owe you healthcare. It's part of our social contract. You don't have to make any excuses about it. I owe you healthcare, just like you owe me healthcare. Yes, we're, some people say, well, you know, you're feeling very entitled. Well, I don't give a darn about the, the word entitlement. Um, we are entitled in a liberal democracy, small L. I don't want, this isn't a, a platform for mm. the party, but we live in a small L democracy. Uh, we've got universal healthcare. And universal means universal. That means everybody. Yes. That means everybody is obligated to everybody else to make sure we have health care. What does that mean? It means we have to keep taxation levels. Sorry, sorry. Uh, you know, you, you, we, we, we've got to get the money somewhere. We've got to keep taxation levels at such a level. We've got to keep them at such a level to make sure that we're not in a society where a number of people start falling in love with politicians who say, you know what? That person was smoking, screw them, they're not getting health care. That person was drinking, that person, uh, you know, uh, was eating uh, way too much uh, apple pie. Uh, mm -hmm. They're clearly overweight, uh, and, and, and we, we start judging people. In a compassionate, liberal democracy, which is what Canada is, we're not here to judge people. We're here to help people. That's right. And if some people want to call that the socialism, I could care less. I just know that the countries that are the happiest, the countries that work best, and and we've got, you know, we've got all kinds of data, you know, Finland and Denmark and Sweden, you know, all of these liberal democracies work best for one simple reason. A critical mass of the population, not just majority, mm -hmm. overwhelming majority, believe, believe that they have an obligation to help each other. Yeah, I, I see. I couldn't agree more. I could agree more. And on that thing with picking and choosing who we're going to provide care for, I'm not sure the person that said that realizes that we've all already picked our poison. Some of us is food, some of us it's alcohol, some of us it's drugs, some of us it's sex, some of us it's working out, some of us it's drama. 
but we've all already picked up. We're, we are all universally, every single one of us, no exceptions, doing things mm-hmm. right now that are not good for our health. So that, like, no health care for anyone then, right? Yeah. Well, basically. <laughs> you know, it's like, we've already, we all have vices. We've picked our poisons already. Like this, unless like something terrible happens, like this, we all know how we're going. We mm-hmm. know what we've done. When it's ourselves alone, we're alone in a mirror. We know what we've done <laughs> or didn't do. <laughs> let, he, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Well, it has that. No aspect. rocks in these it hands. Doesn't it? <laughs> Does it have that aspect to that? Yeah. It's like, oh, you ate too much. You shouldn't have that care. Okay, well, let's talk about uh, all those nights that you worked uh, five extra hours overtime and uh, no, for a terrible boss and you were stressed and you came home and, oh, well, look at that. One day after you retire, you dropped dad because he had a coronary. I just know, know that. I, I just know all that. Our poison. We, I just know that, you know, as, as we, we talk about engaging people, I think we have to engage every moment of our lives we simply have no idea right. when we're out of time we are obligated just as i mentioned about the social contract about how we're obligated i'm obligated uh, to you uh, paul i'm obligated to you uh, douglas i'm obligated to everyone who's who's watching or listening to this similarly and maybe to some people depending on their situation just as important we are obligated to ourselves mm-hmm. we're obligated to ourselves to stay as vital as engaged, yes. as compassionate, as empathetic as we can be, because it's not just about being good to others. That's the only way we can be good to ourselves. I say to people often that, you know, um, mm-hmm. when when we're talking about the kinds of work that give people the most amount of satisfaction, they're actually work that doesn't pay. Now, I understand some people don't have the luxury, they don't have the time to do volunteer work. But mm-hmm. I can tell you this, people, it doesn't matter what part of the world where I'm talking to people, people say that when they enter a phase and sometimes they enter it very, very early, the younger, the better, when they're in a phase of their lives where they're giving to others, those are the times when they have the most amount of life satisfaction. Mm -hmm. It's, it's easy for some people to feel good about themselves by just staring in the mirror and doing more and more cosmetic stuff on themselves and getting incredibly self-involved. And for some people, fine, that, that's fine. But the easiest way to feel good about yourself is not to stare at yourself and, uh, and, and cosmetically treat yourself. The best way to feel good about yourself is when you have an authentic experience where you're helping someone, where you're giving someone a hand up you're giving them a, a ride to the grocery store mm-hmm. or to, to the mosque or the church or the, you know, you're, you're, you're giving them something that may seem like not a big deal to you. And to them, it's everything. It's right. actually, and then you see the smile on their face because there's nothing that gives people a bigger buzz than gratitude coming, genuine gratitude coming oh, yeah. from someone. Well, you can get that buzz. You can get that simply by volunteering in every single community. I, you know, whether it's 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 religious or secular, it doesn't matter. Um, you can Google, you know, community service in in whatever whatever town, whatever city you're living in, and 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 get involved in something. And when you're getting involved, and you're engaged, and you're giving, all of this stuff, all of this hate uh, that that the hate peddlers are peddling will have absolutely no impact on you. None. It's sure. impossible. It's impossible to feel angry all the time when you're putting a smile on someone else's face and mm-hmm. to take it to what we're doing here right now this is why what we're doing can be so satisfying knowing that this is putting smiles on the faces of people knowing that this is offering them genuine companionship knowing that many people who are watching or listening to this are going paul uh, douglas uh, chuck they're saying exactly what i'm feeling and they need that. They need to be affirmed. That's much of what this is all about. And that's why it can be so satisfying. Mm-hmm. It's immensely satisfying. I just going to give, give me a second there, Douglas. It, it, it's immensely satisfying because I find that the connection we've made with the people, the community that we're building here has been 
I don't, I don't, I can't even put it into words the, uh, to, to, to fully describe how people have shown us so much gratitude and mm-hmm. kindness for, for doing this thing that we do every day. And I'm like, really? Like it really connects with people. Like, Cause you know, when you're sitting here in, in your place, like you said earlier at the top of the show, you don't know who you're touching. You don't know who you're reaching out to. You don't know who is listening or watching or paying attention and you don't know how you're affecting them. But I get so much feedback from these people who are saying, thank you for, for speaking up and speaking out. I, I got a, I got a message from a woman who at the start of the occupation in Ottawa by day five, I spoke up pretty loudly. And, uh, as a result she texted me and then we were in a, we were in a chat and she said, and she broke down and started to cry. And she said, my, uh, cousin lived about one block from where you were when you spoke out. I went, Oh, that, yeah, that was, that was a bad area. She says, my cousin is a paraplegic and she has MS and like a lot of health issues. She couldn't leave her apartment. She couldn't breathe because of the, uh, the diesel fumes and the noise and, People, her, she's in Saskatchewan and she was watching this with her father and her father didn't think it was a big deal until he saw me speaking up. And then he went, okay, that's it. Got on a plane that day, flew to Ottawa, got her out of there, brought her to Saskatchewan and ended up bringing her to uh, his cousin, her cousin's place in, in Vancouver because he's like, I had no idea it was that bad. So it was really bad. When, when, when I heard that story, it like, it was like, I can't, because I yelled at somebody in the streets, I, I helped save a life. I mean, I don't feel like I had any hand in it whatsoever, but it's one of these things that what you do in life can affect others. And that taught me a very important lesson. Always do the right thing, even when it's difficult. And always engage, uh, stay engaged. Uh, the more you isolate yourself, uh, right. the less help you're able to offer others. And in the end, the less satisfying your own life. And we have lots of uh, uh, lots of uh, television. I guess would be the best example. Uh, we we have lots of different devices and and coping mechanisms. And of course, Canada, we got some some rotten weather in certain certain times of the year. So we got lots of Ottawa today. Yeah, yeah, right. So we got lots of excuses to stay away from the rest of society. Mm-hmm. But when we do. It's not good. It's not good for the rest of society. It's not good for us. That's why, you know, this, this, this lesson of, you know, the, the most selfish thing you can do is not to give. Because you, you're, being, you're being selfish. You're not giving to others. But you're not giving yourself anything. So, it's, it's, it, you know, the, yeah. the, joke, the joke is on you. And the um, easiest way, easiest yeah. way to, 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 to get uh, is to give. And everybody, as they say, who who gets involved in giving always finds out that no matter how grateful the people are that you're touching, you end up being 10 times as oh, grateful. My, my father taught me so much of this because he was involved in, in service as a tailor. So he must have said the words, you know, a million times, you know, what can I do to help you? Can I help you? What can I do to be of service? You know, I used to hear that kind of language all the time. And fortunately, you know, because I've, because of our economic situation, just poor immigrants, you know, that, that story, that millions of stories like that in Canada, uh, the family does whatever they can to help out little family business. So I was, you know, doing my homework there. I was living there. I was doing chores there. I was around them all the time. And it's the greatest gift of my life because I heard the word help and I heard the word service. And I understood that there's a reason for us being where we are. And the reason is we're here to be of service to others. And mm-hmm. so when someone wants to pull this freedom shtick, yeah. you know, that freedom means leave me the F alone. I just, I just want to do what I want to do. <laughs> that, yeah. You know, that has zero appeal to me. And I don't think of that as freedom. No, that is, no. the, that, that that is no the freedom. Like- that's the freedom to destroy yourself. That's mm-hmm. the freedom to destroy our neighborhood. That's the freedom to destroy our country. If you think of freedom as freedom to smash my dad's windows in his store, if that's what you're saying, if your your freedom is impacting on our property, uh, our little family business that we 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 can't run our business because the the trucks are out there honking and the customers can't can't come and see us, 
uh, if if your freedom is harming our business and harming our lives and, and not wearing masks and you know deliberately breathing on us, et cetera, et cetera, if you call that freedom, I'm sorry, that is not even close to what freedom is. No. Freedom, the most important freedom we have is the freedom to help each other. Don't stop me. Don't oppress me. Don't sit on me. Don't honk at me. Don't prevent me from helping my neighbor, whether my neighbor is in a wheelchair or in a hospital bed or in any other kind of situation. Some people, you know, they couldn't they couldn't walk their dogs. They, they were afraid mm -hmm. to go outside. They had, uh, you know, they were they were vulnerable people. And so, one of the greatest pieces of service that, that people were able to offer was to walk their dogs for them. It's it's so easy to do. It's, I mean, no you, know, you, you, you know, you're, you're walking someone's little, you know, retriever or shepherd or terrier or whatever. I mean, and, and it's making all the difference in the world uh, to the to, to the owner uh, who's afraid to go outside. You know, they're grateful as hell. You get to spend time with a dog and you're feeling that you're doing something. And when you're doing, when all of that is happening, how much time do you have for some radical right wingers screaming at you about masks and how vaccines are killing people and 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 and, and the government's out to get you and there's this WEF and in Switzerland and they're trying to hurt you? You don't have you know when you when you're doing those things when you're helping to walk someone's dog, you're babysitting someone's uh, child, you're taking someone uh, for, for for treatment, whatever it is you're doing, all of those things are easy to do, but the benefit is. You end up tuning out the garbage. You end up seeing the garbage for what it is. And it's important to see the garbage for what it is because if you don't, it gets in you. It, oh, yes. it pollutes It pollutes your mind. And then it yep. gets you to a situation where the only people that you can hang around with, whether it's on social media or the real world, are people like that. You can mm -hmm. only hang around with your fellow paranoids, which, of course, makes you even more Vulnerable, F, the afraid. bias confirmation uh, echo chamber. Yeah. I had a question to ask you that's a little more personal. Um, uh, I noticed that something changed uh, when I was uh, reading you and listening to you around the time uh, that the UCP and Jason Kenney were trying to take some interesting action with regard to GSAs and you were very vocal uh, in defense of kids. Yeah. Um, I'm gay. Yeah. Just cards on the table. Um, so it resonated with me. Um, I don't know if that's a moment where a light went on or something switched that you realized that we were not playing the same game or if it happened before. But for me, that's when I noticed it. And I was just wondering if what that moment was for you, if it wasn't that moment, which one it was, but what was it about the GSA thing specifically that, yeah, the, got, that, the, the that got you to, yeah. to use your voice? The GSA uh, was a tipping point because um, the most um, salient um, the uh, as you can tell, I'm having a hard time saying it. Not because I don't know what I'm talking about. I just, I, I'm just, I'm just. It's always difficult for me to talk about. Um, the greatest influence in my, on my life is is a very dark one, and that's the Holocaust. I can't get away from it. No, I think about it every day, and even when I try not to think about it, when I'm sleeping, yeah. my mind doesn't allow me to get a, away from it. I don't want to discuss all of the uh, yeah. the visuals and all of my dreams and all of that. I don't want to be a, a downer. Uh, I don't want to be a skunk at the picnic. However, because I started studying because of what happened to my parents and 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 the loss of all of our uh, our, our relatives. You know, I never got to see my paternal grandmother and grandfather and uncles and aunts and nephews and and some of them were just children, uh, as small children, babies. Um, there's nothing about it that's that, that's positive. Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that one of the things that it forces me to to do is as much work as possible. And what was the mentality? Where did it come from? Who was targeted? Why were they targeted? And it was impossible for me not to to learn that that uh, there's no really nice way of putting this. My 
my grandparents shared a chimney with gay men. Uh, and I owe it to those gay men who were killed because they were gay. And it was mostly, as far as the LGBT community is concerned, it was mostly mostly men, mostly gay men. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Douglas, there, there's no way that I can be paying attention to the GSA business without, uh, without feeling 100% obligated uh, to fight for those gay men that I never met because I'm fighting for them just as I'm fighting for my grandfather and grandmother who I, I never met. Mm -hmm. And uh, if whatever it is out there that, you know, gave me the, the gift of the gab, the, the ability to tell a story, the ability to, to connect with people on the deepest levels, if I don't use those gifts to help people like the folks who ended up in the chimneys, if mm -hmm. I don't do that, then what, what, what is the point of this life? So politically, uh, whether it's in Alberta or elsewhere, in this particular case, it was an Alberta uh, situation. If, um, if, if Jason Kenney and, and other people uh, want to use uh, fear and loathing, in this case, of gay people in order to make political points, well, then I'm, I'm going to have to make some, some, some of my own points. And it means that, yes, my friendship with da Jason Kenney was in ashes. That, um, sorry, we're, I think we're both a little emotional here uh, at that. That was, that was heavier than we were expecting. Uh, thank you for that. Um, and, and, uh, well, that makes perfect sense as to why you would stand up and fight. And, and thank you for that. Um, yes. I'm, I'm not a member of the community, but, uh, I have many friends and family members that are, uh, relatives, friends, coworkers, colleagues, and, and, and uh, I, I would, I, you know, allyship is not something that you can claim. It is something that is bestowed upon you. So I've been told that I'm an ally. So I will accept that because I will always, as you said, sir, fight to make sure that that doesn't happen again. And we can't allow it to happen. It, we could, where's our humanity gone if we do, if we turn a blind eye to it, you know? Uh, you know, um, there are labels that we have in, in, in this world uh, because if we don't uh, have labels, it's hard to get our arms around this business. But, you know, right now, uh, the libraries in, in Missouri, public libraries, are not going to be getting funding. And why aren't they going to be getting funding? Because the Republicans have decided they're not going to get any funding. Because, but what's that really about? I mean, are, do the Republicans not want people to read no, I mean, all of this stems from the, the, the latest targeting of, of, of transgendered people. Mm -hmm. And they don't, want, they don't want people to be able to read those books. They don't want people to have knowledge. They don't want people to have the knowledge that some people on this planet aren't either or. Not everything is binary. And just because we don't understand it, because we, we're not intelligent enough to understand it. We haven't done enough homework and research to understand it. We haven't had, had enough people who are transgender uh, d d discussing with us. Just because we don't understand it doesn't mean that we have to hate it. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, it's, 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 it's just so ridiculous. It's yeah. so ridiculous to, 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 to put people in a box and to make them want to end it all mm -hmm. because they're surrounded by this hate. Um, and so that's what the library story is all about. That's what so many other stories are, are all about. Right now, the conservative movement, much more so, I think, in the States than in Canada. But I, I know I'm not naive. Everything that happens in the States, everything ends up drifting over the, you know, just like our weather impacts mm -hmm. on, on, on them. You know, the Arctic cold is coming down from Canada and it's going to affect Minnesota and it's going to affect Missouri. It's going to affect all the, come, you know, the weather's coming down from Canada. Well, some of this bad crap is coming up from the United States. And for some people, it's just an intellectual thing. It's just a TV show. It's something they read about online. But for many of us, it's not theoretical and it's not TV. It's very mm -hmm. real. If that's us, it affects uh, people in our families. And, you know, years ago, when I was a much younger man and there was this uh, movement to get gay people to come out and coming out was very, very difficult. 
for a whole host of reasons. But I used to think that one of the positives that we're going to achieve with coming out is finally people are going to find out that they've got friends, that they've got family members. So it's not going to be a theoretical thing, this business about being gay. It's real. Mm -hmm. And a significant percentage of people are. And I remember there was this period of time where, uh, you know, the people who were ultra reactionary, ultra conservative were saying, it's not even 1%. It's not even, you know, it's just a, and I, I used to think, well, you know, I know that it's much higher than 1%, but what difference? Who cares? What, what, what difference does it make? Yeah. I mean, if, if someone, you know, if, if someone is, a, is in a wheelchair and uh, they're in a situation where, you know, you've got, whether it's, it's potholes or whatever it is you've got in the street that's making it difficult for them to navigate, you, you pick them up or you pick the chair up and, and, and you help them across the street or you help, you help them into their homes. That's what we do. We don't go, well, most people on the street aren't in wheelchairs. Most people on the street don't need our help. And when, when, I, when I hear that, when I see it with, with my own eyes, and of course, the, you know, the, when, you, when you're a talk show host for so many years, many of these haters, they feel comfortable enough to tell you uh, mm -hmm. precisely how they're feeling. So I, over the years, have been inundated, whether it's the snail mail, the email, the, the, the tweets, uh, the phone calls, I've been inundated. By, and of course, the, the haters don't think of themselves as haters. Of course, but no, no, no. The, the, I've been I've been inundated by 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 rivers of hate, if you will, and um, the only way that I can sustain myself is to speak out, and 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 to do whatever I can to make people aware that hatred is not normal, that you don't have to accept hate, and you certainly don't have to enable hate. And you certainly don't have to go out and hustle it and make money off it right. uh, and clicks and, and, and all of that. You don't have to do that. So there's that expression, and it was used a lot in recent days because of what happened in, in Nashville with the shooting. And, of course, we've got shootings almost every day. Yes. Uh, but when, when people say, we really don't have to live this way, you know, that is such an important uh, line for me. Because we don't, we don't have to. Sometimes we pretend that, oh, it's just, it's, it's, it's just overwhelming, and there's nothing we can do. Of course, there is. Speak the hell out, and get your friends to speak out. Talk back. Yeah. You know, Canada is not a hateful country. Canada is not a country of reaction. This is a liberal democracy. But I think I end up having to 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 leave you with this message tonight, guys. It's only a liberal democracy if we fight for it. Right. It's only a liberal democracy if we defend it. Right. We have to understand how lucky we are, but we can't just sit there on our asses automatically assuming that we'll always be lucky. There are other people out there, some of them are in our own neighborhoods, who are trying to sabotage the liberal democracy. And mm -hmm. it's not too strong a word. It's precisely what they're trying to do. They're trying to poison the well. We are in the majority, but sometimes the silent majority is not just silent, but passive. We yeah. can't be passive about this. And one of the reasons that, you know, I'm so grateful to have this, this platform with both of you is I had a sense, I had to wait until I got on, but I had a sense that that is at the core of the core of what this platform is about. Mm -hmm. It's about how we can fight for and defend the liberal democracy that gives us the opportunity to live in the greatest country in the world only, only yes. if we do exactly what we're doing right now. Yes. Well, in, in the words of, of uh, late Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau back in 1980, Canada is a dream. Don't let the dream die. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's a beautiful dream. By the way, he was just, uh, it's, it's trivia, I guess, but um, it's been pretty heavy and maybe it can, uh, lighten up a little bit here. Um, I was, uh, you know, I got the vote. I was 18. Uh, the first federal election came up when I was 19. So at 19, I, I got to, uh, I got to vote. And the member, the member of parliament in the riding that I was living in was Pierre Trudeau. Oh, really? So that, that I can honestly, I wow. can honestly say that Pierre Trudeau got my very first vote. Uh, his son got my most recent vote. Um, and, uh, and I can pretty much assume, based on uh, 
what's going on, uh, that uh, he will likely get my, my, my next vote. And uh, there are, for whatever reason, uh, people in, in social media who are afraid, afraid to say things like, well, what are you afraid of? <laughs> what are you afraid of? That you'll, you'll vote for someone who champions liberal democracy? You're afraid because, because they, they, they've got stuff on him in the news about how, you know, he's, uh, uh, you know, he's paying more attention to China than he is to Canada. All this kind of stuff that, you know, fills uh, social media platforms and fills talk shows and whatever. But, you know, putting all of that aside, just, you know, getting the Zamboni out and getting all that garbage off the ice. Are you seriously worried about admitting that you're going to vote for the person who is fighting for liberal democracy and gives us the best hope of maintaining it? And what can be more obvious that he's the one fighting for liberal democracy than the fact that the guy attacking him day after day after day is a guy who is as close as it gets uh, to those American Republicans mm. who want to shut down libraries? Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. the, today, the, the DeSantis in, in, in Florida, uh, no abortion after six weeks. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and a judge in Texas saying, we're not going to allow abortion pills yeah. to be distributed. Oh, so, so, so hang on, you're anti-abortion, but you want more therapeutic abortions because that's what happens if you, and, and you, you know, it's, it's hard to engage. It's like trying yeah. to engage someone who believes the earth is flat or doesn't believe mm -hmm. in the law of, of gravity. And, yeah. and um, it becomes very frustrating. They, they've got their mind made up and it doesn't matter what you say to them. Right. So in, in this country, it, it, becomes, okay. it becomes very obvious as to what our, what our choices are. And this isn't me, you know, campaigning for someone. Mm -hmm. but what I'm campaigning for is, is, is Canada. I'm yes. campaigning to, 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 you know, Canada has changed because of the pandemic. All countries have changed. I, 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 just, want to, I just want to put the brakes on. Yeah. I, you know, we, I just don't want to go off the cliff. We've been saying this on the show for the longest time now, I think. You know, it's, it's almost like the choice imposes itself. If you're looking for minimally competent government that doesn't lie to you about what the law says, government that doesn't lie to you about what the Constitution says, government that seems to like the people it serves. <laughs> <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> wow. um, minimally coherent policy actually leave some stuff behind like child care i mean you know when you think about it this government has been somewhat transformational there's been a lot of legacy pieces that are leaving behind if they somebody doesn't come and uproot them all right after they've been planted but i mean it's like if you're just looking Basic competence, policy that somewhat makes sense. It probably won't always be executed perfectly, but at least it makes sense. They don't seem to despise two thirds of the nation. They don't. I mean, it's. It's like what? What? What other choice? I, I don't. I. I do not understand. You know, it's oh, he's virtue signaling. Okay, but he's signaling virtue. <laughs> yeah. 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 What is horrible. everybody else? So we're, we're all it's signaling like, something, like, right? It's like the woke business. So. Yeah. Let me get this. Let me get this straight. Uh, you know, I get accused of you're woke, Chuck. You're you're woke. So okay. So let me get this straight. Um, I'm supposed to apologize because I'm woke because I am awake to the idea that some people can't afford their childcare, and, and I want to make sure that they get childcare. Um, you know, and, and and some people are are picked on uh, because they're they're transgender, and some political hate hustler is able to make money or gain political power on uh, on that at the expense of, of, a, of a young person or a, a middle-aged person. Uh, so I'm woke because I care about that transgendered person. Okay, so am I supposed to apologize because I care? Uh, you know, they, right. they talk, they use this uh, ridiculous uh, word, uh, you know, virtue signaling. You know, I put some stuff out on, on Twitter to heighten people's consciousness of, of certain things. And uh, people go, oh, Chuck's just virtue signaling. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I think uh, giving people childcare is 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 a virtue, and denying them of childcare uh, is not. And so, yes, I'm 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 signaling how I feel about that. Am I supposed to apologize? Uh, am I supposed to apologize for wanting to be a helpful citizen? Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Oh, you're being, you're being woke. Okay, fine. I, if that makes you happy, call me woke. I mean, I, it, it doesn't right. matter to me. Right. Call me woke. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Once again, the binary says, if, if I have a choice between being woke or being a bad fascist joke, 
which it's, which an, easy, one, it's an easy choice. I think so. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? Let's let's be a decent, caring, kind human being, or a raging a hole. Uh, I'm gonna go with the kind, caring. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with that. Are you sure I'll there are some benefits friends. to being a raging a hole, though? Right? Yeah, but I think you I have more them? friends being kind. And, you know, I'll I'll feel better and I'll sleep at night knowing okay. that I I was kind to people. Okay, so we've considered it. There, settled. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a douche, people. <laughs> Don't be a douche. <laughs> oh wow, um, this this has been uh, uh, an absolute uh, privilege for us. Uh, thank you, sir, for, for spending time with us. Um, we can keep going if you like. We're not in any panic. I just wanted to, I wanted to put that out there and let you know we're very grateful for the time that you've shared with us and how privileged we feel that you were able to spend some time with us. And and my goodness gracious, it's been um, a little bit deeper than I expected us to get, but that's okay. That's why this is such a wonderful medium because we can sit and have a conversation. Well, I, I just hope that someday you'll uh, you'll invite me back because uh, oh, absolutely! You know, well, I've, I've made I've made uh, two good friends uh, tonight. I heard about you, but I didn't get to have this kind of engagement. I made uh, two good friends uh, tonight, and who knows uh, how many friends we've made among those people who are paying attention. But um, after I make friends, uh, you know, I want to I want to keep them. Uh, oh, absolutely! You know. Absolutely, and you know, um, it's, as we get older, it's harder to make new friends, right? Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. in the last 10 years, I've been to 44 funerals. I, I don't want to go to any more. <laughs> so I got to make as many new friends as I can. <laughs> you need, uh, we need, uh, I tell you, you know, when it comes to uh, the friendship, uh, some people just have that gift, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and, uh, and, and I think they know who they are. Uh, and I just want to thank them for being a friend. And on behalf of all those people who have been touched by kindness in the last uh, couple of years, I just want them to know that uh, I'm thinking about them. And um, and it um, for for those people who are still on the fence who somehow think that uh, being called woke is, is is bad or 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 being kind, uh, you know, when you're being kind and encouraging others to be kind, if you're worried about people, come, please please don't please don't worry about it. Uh, you know, they know not what they do. Uh, these people who aren't doing anything for anyone and accusing you, uh, don't, don't, don't worry about them. Um, being a good person is, is a good, good deal. I would recommend that uh, anybody listening to this uh, get on uh, YouTube and uh, download Mr. Rogers, okay? Mm. Fr Fred Rogers receiving an Academy yes. Award. Yes. Um, it's one of the most inspirational pieces I've ever seen where Fred Rogers in his very compassionate, really electrifying, but yet understated. He should have been a Canadian because he yeah. can, he understates everything in such a marvelous way. He's from Penn. He was from Pennsylvania. Uh, but, uh, I would, I would suggest that if, if you're in doubt about uh, whether or not uh, being kind is the right way to go, Google Fred Rogers, R O G E R S, Fred Rogers Award, and uh, it'll it'll get you to where you need to be. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you are definitely welcome back. Absolutely, anytime. anytime. Um, I wanted to um, thank you uh, for agreeing uh, to come on our show. Also, want to uh, thank you for sharing so much, and thank you for standing up for our community. Um, it means a lot. Now, really uh, I, I just uh, don't mean to be do too much inside baseball here, but I just want to let the folks know because you're too decent to let them know. So I'll just, you know, uh, tell them I agreed to 10 minutes. Okay. I agreed to come on for 10 minutes and you guys said 10 minutes, that whatever you can give us 10 minutes is enough. And, I, and the reason I said 10 minutes now, I'll, I'll just tell you with, with all of our witnesses here, the reason I said 10 minutes is because I had no idea uh, how good it would feel to spend time with you guys. Oh. <laughs> and so, and so I, I haven't looked at a clock. I don't know where we, we've gone, you know, 40 minutes, an hour, an hour, 10 minutes. I don't know what, 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 what it is, but whatever, whatever it's been, uh, has been the best 10 minutes that I've ever spent <laughs> on a platform. Uh, thank, thank you. you sir. Very kind. Very um, kind of you. I, 
I was going to do it in the, we were going to record a little stuff to go around it afterwards, but I, I want to say it now in front of you uh, because I was going to put it before the interview and I think we'll, we might do it as well. Uh, but we do have a previous interaction before this because I was on your show also at one point when I had a certain incident with a certain leader of a federal party uh, who uh, accused me of wanting the lynching of one of his white MPs. Ooh. And um, you had me on uh, and uh, you would let me say what I needed to say. And you paid me a very, very kind compliment uh, because you were asking me a lot of questions about how I felt about Mr. Blanchette. And I made a point of saying that I really don't know his mind. I can only speak to his behavior and that I reason why I wanted to speak with him about what it is that he had done was to try and bring his party under his leadership to a place where um, they would see what impact that would have on someone else and maybe want to uh, make some changes of their own volition. And you paid me a very good compliment about uh, what type of uh, person I was because I was focused on that. Uh, and, uh, you made a call out on the show itself in case the prime minister was listening um, to make to, to ask the questions that I, that I had for him about that. Um, so, and uh, again, that meant a lot to me. So um, I just wanted to know uh, the, the kids to know full transparency that I am very grateful to this man uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, twice over now. Thank you very much, sir. Well, uh, Douglas, uh, you save lives uh, when you come on shows like that. Uh, you save lives when you do what you're doing right now. And how can I not be grateful uh, to be able to, to share some time with a lifesaver? I mean, uh, oh. based on what I was telling you about earlier, the uh, you know what, what impacts on my life uh, every, every single day, and when some people say, get over it, I'm sorry, I'm never, never getting over it. Yep. And I owe it to, to the people who are no longer with us, the people whose lives were shortened, I owe it to them to, to never get over it. Uh, I will, uh, I will never forget. And so when I think about, uh, that uniquely evil set of uh, circumstances, you know, I just, uh, I just say to myself, that I owe it uh, to the Douglases of this world uh, to encourage them to do what they're doing because they are saving lives and saving lives really matters to me. You know what? Uh, whether you're saving the life of a really great person or someone who isn't, uh, isn't absolutely wonderful, it, it, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, just just so you're you're clear on this, because we mentioned uh, the piece of business about uh, being gay and being uh, targeted. Some of the people who target you are gay. They may not want to admit to themselves that they're gay. They may have issues around self-loathing, but whether they know it or not, um, they are people whose lives need yeah. to be saved. Yeah. They need you yeah. far more, far more than they think. And I can just tell you based on having, you know, lived for more than four or five decades that at some point, some of them will wake up. Some of them will, and they yes. will have you, the person they targeted, they will have you to, to thank for that. But you know, in the, in the meantime, I just thank you so much for, for contacting me and allowing me to, to spend some time with you. It's been a privilege and an honor, yeah. an absolute privilege and an absolute honor, sir. We really do appreciate the time you spent with us. Uh, I know Douglas is a little verklempt right now, but that's okay. He's, he's an emotional fella. We, 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 we occasionally shed tears on this show. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Come on. I'm, I'm going to be 55 in a couple of months and, and you know, I, I'm in touch with my emotions and, and more so now than I've ever been because as, as you, and as you can attest to, sir, as you age, hopefully with age comes wisdom and experience helps teach us uh, uh, that we need to be learning something every day. And one of the things I've learned ha has been to, to be, show more kindness, 
more compassion because the world is nothing but chaos and to punch Nazis. Always punch Nazis. <laughs> I'll tell you, there is, uh, there is nothing wrong with, uh, with having emotion, nothing wrong with showing it. Nope. Uh, a couple of uh, elections ago, uh, there I am, you know, live television, uh, election coverage. It was a federal election. And I'm in a Toronto studio with uh, some of my uh, radio colleagues. As a matter of fact, to come to think of it, the person sitting beside me was doing radio at the time for a station that was affiliated with the one I was with, and her name was uh, Danielle Smith. And uh, mm -hmm. anyone who's following Twitter knows that even though I, I Danielle Smith has been someone that I was able to call a friend and acquaintance for many years, and on this uh, particular night, she was very, very helpful because I was getting very emotional about a particular question that I was being asked, and it was uh, difficult as it was difficult to answer one of the questions earlier tonight on this platform, Danielle Smith actually reached out, you know, she actually put her hand on my hand mm -hmm. uh, to show me some, some support. Um, and the question was asked by one of the, uh, one of the anchors, uh, her name is Farah Nasser. She's one of the, the best anchors in the world. And in, in my opinion, and uh, Farah Nasser was asking me, what that moment was in my life when I essentially felt that the conservative uh, party was no longer my home. And uh, I had no idea that, uh, that that question would be coming to me and the conservative party was very much my home for, mm -hmm. for a long time. And uh, it, um, that, that, that home was, in my opinion, taken away from me. There was a home invasion mm -hmm. and the home invasion was uh, the Harper people deciding to have a barbaric practices hotline, uh, to have people snitching on other people. Uh, and essentially what it was, was they, they wanted people who were not Muslim to be suspicious of Muslims. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm not, I'm not a Muslim, uh, but it doesn't matter. You know, when people used to call in the show, they wanted to get this, you know, they wanted to get anti Muslim and they wanted to get anti gay. And so I, I've said several times on my show, if you hate gay people, please think of me as gay. If you mm -hmm. hate, uh, if you hate Muslim people, please, please think of me as, as Muslim. It's just my way of saying, no, I'm not on your side. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to enable you. I'm not going to affirm you. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, don't, don't, don't count on me. And for the people who are having their buttons pushed because they're, they're gay or they're Muslim or they're transgender or they're paraplegic or they've got problems with, with mental health or whatever it is, I, I, you know, those are the people I'm concerned about, not, not the haters. Uh, so I am them. And, um, and so when they asked me the question about, you know, what was that moment, that transformational moment where you essentially had to abandon uh, the, the, that, that party? Well, I felt, of course, that they abandoned me, but I, I got very, very emotional and it was mm -hmm. about the barbaric practices hotline and Faranasser, uh, you know, was looking at me, uh, in the eye, and I just lost it for a bit. That's where I say Danielle Smith was, you know, held my hand to because I was trying to hold it together. And I just said that they were coming after my brothers. Mm. They were coming after my brothers, my sisters, my neighbors. And I just, I just, I just lost it that night because I, I you know, I, and I said to them, you know, on live TV, this is really difficult for me. This is, this is hard to talk about because it was something that I never expected. Wait a minute. I thought these guys were my family. This was yeah. my home for, for decades. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who, who are you? Who are you people? Yeah. And, and some people after the, the, the show were contacting me and saying that, you know, they just didn't understand. They said, but, but Chuck, th those weren't your brothers. Those weren't your sisters because you're not a Muslim. And I said, it, I, 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 I'm a human being. Yes. You know, I'm a human being. Another thing that pe people can go to, to YouTube for tonight or, or any night, uh, just YouTube elephant man. Mm -hmm. And, yes. and the words, I am a human being. It was one of the most beautiful movies I've ever yeah. seen in, in my life. And anybody who has ever been uh, targeted, please see the movie, or at least please see that scene with the wonderful, uh, I have to now call him the late, the late great uh, John Hurt playing mm -hmm. the role of the Elephant Man, where he he is begging people to understand that just because he's in a freak show doesn't mean he's a freak. 
Yeah. He's a human being. And it doesn't matter to me whether the barbaric practices hotline was, was targeting Muslims or Christians or Jews. Or whatever. What, 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 this is Canada. What do you mean you're targeting people? What do you right. mean you want Canadians to rat out people uh, right. to be suspicious of them because, because they wear different garments? Right. Are, you, are you actually serious? Somebody's mm. wearing a different, someone's wearing a, a headscarf right. and I'm supposed to be suspicious of them? Um, anyway, I'm sorry if I'm losing it here. Like, I'm no, 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 roll. We feel the same but, way. But I, I just, I, I just, I, I, you know, I, 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 I didn't know whether I was leaving them or they were leaving me, but it doesn't matter. It's like one of these horrible jobs that people have and, and, and you don't know whether you quit or whether you were fired, but it doesn't matter. You just want to be the hell away from there. Get yeah. me, get me out of this, this, yeah. this Dante's Inferno. And, um, it still amazes me. That even though that was whatever it was, you know, five years ago, it still amazes me that 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 some people are still just not getting why I am not comfortable with that particular party and why mm -hmm. I end up being naturally more comfortable with a party that defends us. Yes, from them. Yeah. That's how I, that's how I look at the liberals. I, I don't. You know, it's not even like I don't even call myself a liberal. I'm not a card-carrying liberal. No. I just look at the reality of where Canada is today, and I need for the majority of people in this country uh, who do want to be helpful to people, the overwhelming majority. I just, I just need a party that will defend us from them. Yeah. Well, yeah. we 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 have yeah. posited on yeah. on occasion on this show, what would life be like right now had Andrew Shear been elected pre-pandemic and, and and i can't even begin to imagine the chaos the suffering the austerity measures would serve have been a thing well not according to pierre because he says well we're conservatives we don't believe in big government programs i'm like excuse me what 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 you're going to let us wither and die is that what you're saying because that was the message i got you know it, it's so it's so bizarre to me because uh you know, the way things used to be, well, I mean, I thought of myself as a progressive, a mm. progressive conservative. Yes. And one of the reasons that I was a progressive conservative is I felt that progressive conservatives would absolutely make sure, because it meant being, you know, fiscally responsible, it meant that we would always have money in the kitty mm -hmm. in case of disaster, in case of emergency. But if there was a disaster, if there was emergency, then that money would be available because we would do what what private people, uh, what the free so-called free market, because it gets suspended when you've got different calamities like like the pandemic. So the the role of government is to do what what ordinary people cannot do for themselves. Mm -hmm. So as I was growing up in the Progressive Conservative Party, CERB is the kind of thing that to me was an automatic. A given. People right. can't feed themselves. We're going to feed them. It's it's not not complicated, right? That's real no, not at all. And this, I don't I don't see Serb as being a liberal thing. I I, no. I I I I see it as being a forgive me for saying this a Canadian thing. Mm -hmm. And and right. and and if the conservatives, the current the current crop of conservatives, if all they want to do is impersonate the worst Republican right wing characters in the states, if that's what they're busy doing, if they think that's cool, they well, they what they they want to be wannabes, that that's fine. But, it, it, you know, in, in that case, you, you've got to have a, another crowd of people that wants to keep Canada Canadian. We had a guest yeah. on not too long ago who said there, he says, it's not liberal, it's not conservative. It's humanist or corporatist. Which are you? I'm like, well, I'm humanist. I'm human, period. You know, I don't have a problem with the free market, but hang on. Let's take care of humanity first. The, the free market can't uh, solve every problem. Uh, no. Nope. You know, it's not the free market. Uh, you know, that runs the ambulance service. It's not the free market that uh, runs the fight. Can you imagine? I mean, can, can you imagine if, uh, you know, you're, you're living in a, in a neighborhood and uh, somebody's house or, or store is on fire? Can, can you imagine having a situation where some intermediary uh, st tries to make a decision, uh, you know, based on whatever income or, you know, whatever uh, uh, ridiculous reason that there is, uh, to 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 hesitate calling the fire department because we don't know whether that house has paid 
all of its bills. We don't know if that person, yeah. uh, you know, uh, might owe some money uh, to 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 the government or to or to whomever. We we don't know whether or not uh, their service needs to be cut off. You know, you don't do that. It's it's like the uh, it's like the candidate in 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 that rural riding in in Alberta saying that the uh, the people who are having heart attacks ought to be held accountable. I don't yeah. think we need uh, to hold the person uh, who, who's got the fire problem accountable. I think what we've got to do is, is, is put out the fire. And by the way, with the reason we put out the fire isn't just to help that person or that family. It's because if we don't put out that fire in that particular home or business, the fire is going to spread. And that's the story of government, you know, uh, discussions about big government and small government. You've got to have an efficient government. You've got to have a government that has access to what it needs. Much of what it needs is the goodwill of people. Mm -hmm. And if the government doesn't put out the fire, the fire spreads. And the right. fire we've been talking about to some extent tonight is hate. And right. if we don't have a government that can put out the hate, the hate will spread. It happens in countries all over the world. I never thought that in my lifetime I would see it happen in my beloved Canada, Neither but do I am I am seeing it, and I, I don't want to be an ostrich about it. I want no. people to, to 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 speak to people about it, and 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 basically say to them, if this is something that you've been thinking about, it's not stinking thinking. It's healthy to think about it. It may be unpleasant, but it's healthy, and I've been thinking about it too. Yeah, it was one of the biggest reasons we started this this program was to inform people. Give them straight goods, straight facts, no lies. We're going to have opinions, and we'll express that we're, we're expressing our opinions. We're not journalists. We're just a couple of guys who love this country, who believe in democracy, because as Douglas always says, democracy is something you do. And we were so disappointed with what was going on in this country, how, how so many stories were not getting the facts. Like, I'll give you, for instance, this morning on, a, on the live stream, there was a gentleman who had said in the chat that he was upset that um, uh, Pierre Trudeau, Pierre Trudeau <laughs> Justin Trudeau did not bring an end to first past the post and he wanted proportional representation. And well, I just left it up to Douglas to just explain to him, well, here's why. And he's like, what? I didn't know that. Of course you didn't know that. It was a two minute clip on the news once, but you've had people like Pierre and other individuals who have beaten that horse to death long after it's been dead that he didn't, he broke that promise. Well, it wasn't that he broke the promise. It's that it was a promise that couldn't be kept. It was a lot more complicated than he broke his promise. It wasn't that. That wasn't the case at all. But people weren't getting the straight goods. They weren't getting the facts. They weren't getting the, the meat of the story. So that's what we're trying to provide is, and of course, let's be compassionate and kind and caring along the way and maybe have a laugh or two here and there. But Let's deliver the truth to people because people, when they're informed, and I, I, I think you'll agree with me, most people, when they are well-informed, will make a good decision. There's a, nothing more abusive in a society than distorting the truth uh, for political reasons, which means for power, mm -hmm. for money. And uh, there's nothing uh, that is more helpful to society and simply telling the truth and trusting that most people who have the truth will do the right thing. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. That's, that's where I put, that's one of the reasons why I love this country. I know a lot of people criticize us, but I, I maintain this. We all have, yeah, it's like the polling thing, 19 times out of 20. Sometimes we don't get it right, but I maintain that we have some of the savviest voters in the world. We do. So long as they vote. <laughs> yeah, we just need people. I'm looking at you, Ontario. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, uh, you know, if, um, you know, we, we can talk about the polls now and, you know, who knows what it'll be a year from now, two years from now. But I, I just know this. If every, and I, I'm not saying that we need mandates on this and, you know, we'll, you know, we'll punish people for not voting. I'm, I'm not, I'm not for that. Mm -hmm. But I, could, I just know this about this country. If everyone in this country did vote, 90% of what we're worried about right now, we would never yeah. have to worry about. Yeah. So I'm just hoping that uh, there are as many 
of these messages on, on, on these platforms, telling people how important their vote is. Because I think sometimes, uh, you know, people, especially when they're living relatively isolated, they, they think they don't matter. They think that uh, their contributions don't matter, that they're invisible. Nobody, nobody knows anything about them. And unfortunately, when it comes to liberal democracy, they also think their vote doesn't matter. Yeah. It does. I love does. you for voting, no matter who you're voting for. Right. I That's love, I love you for voting, and I know what the numbers are. I know what I know where the hearts of the majority of people are, because they've told me. It's not not a trick. It's not because I'm clairvoyant. Over the years, they have told me. Millions of people have have told me. So we're living in a good country, and the overwhelming mm -hmm. majority of people are good. And so, if the overwhelming majority of people vote, we'll be just fine. I agree. I always recommend to say vote and bring someone with you. Yeah. <laughs> don't and go we're wrong. never going to tell you how to vote. Look, friends we'll, don't we'll, let friends vote alone. Just vote. <laughs> vote. If you don't vote, you you give up your voice. Well, if you don't, if you, I mean, the, the math is, is, the math works like this. If you're a good person and you don't vote, you're giving a person with crazy ideas that are going to affect you and your friends and your neighbors, sometimes for generations, you're giving them power. Yes. That's that's why you have power. If nothing else, if you remember nothing else that you hear on this program, all you have to remember is this. If you choose not to vote, you're giving bad ideas extra power. You are empowering ideas that are going to hurt you, your family, and your country if you don't vote. Okay. And, 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 and I hope people... Uh, to start to develop an understanding of how valuable they are. They're not invisible and their votes are very visible. You, 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 you've got an issue with your feeling irrelevant, uh, invisible, people don't care about you. They do care about your vote. So if you want people to care about, you want to guarantee that people care about you, V-O-T-E. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's that there simple. You. It's not rocket surgery. It's not complicated. <laughs> Wor worst case, Ontario. Uh, no, that's a that's a bad pun. But <laughs> we we did we only had a forty three percent turnout in the last election, and, and look at what that got us. Because old Dougie is just yeah, I don't even want. I'll go down that rabbit hole. I'll be down there for hours. I, I don't I don't need that right now. I'm in a very good emotional place right now. We've had such a wonderful evening. I don't want to ruin it with the the negativity of Doug Ford. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I have enjoyed, no matter how difficult some of the conversation has been, I've enjoyed this evening so much. I'm going to re reward myself with one of my favorite meals. And you're going to say, oh, Jeff, what's one of those? It's not complicated. It's sweet potatoes. They're frozen. They're McCain's, okay? Oh, they're, they're, oh I've had them. They're very okay, good. Okay, so I'm going to have some McCain's uh, sweet potatoes and, uh, and, uh, and another glass of uh, Diet Coke in your honor. Um, I just... Um, Paul Douglas uh, and everyone else who's uh, responsible for uh, making you guys happen, meaning your folks, uh, meaning the, the important teachers in your life, meaning whatever the influences are that uh, bring your love uh, to this microphone, this camera, and this screen. So whoever has participated in loving you and inspiring you, I just want to thank all of them. I'm grateful for all of them because this, you know, in, in a career – it started on uh, Canada Day, 1973. So this is what, uh, 50, we're just a few years. months away from yeah. Canada Day, 2023. So if my math, I've got, my math isn't wonderful, but I think that's half a century. That's so a I century. can just tell you in this, this half century, this has been um, uh, one of um, one of my m m most beautiful hours, if you will. I don't know whether we've gone an hour, maybe a little more, maybe we've gone an hour and a half or whatever it is. It, when, when, when you're doing, when, when, you know, when you've got a great friendship with someone, it doesn't matter whether it's in a coffee shop or a platform like this, you know, time gets compressed. So mm -hmm. I honestly don't know how long we've gone, uh, but it's been, it's been really, really beautiful. And I just want to thank everyone involved in your lives and your lives and, and your minds and your hearts. Uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to share like this. This does not, you know, some some people think that, oh, you just, it's just automatic. It just comes, it's, it's, it just flows like Niagara Falls. Not true, not mm -hmm. true. If you're, if you, if you don't have the right chemistry with the folks that you're talking to, it doesn't flow, but you're, 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 you're helping me tonight. And I know that we're helping other people and oh, that yes. makes me feel darn good. 
Hell yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, Let's leave um, it on that. Let's leave it on beaming. that. We're beaming right now. Beaming. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It's oh, been an honor. So it's a so privilege and a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate I love you. you. Love Thank you. you. Brother. And it's I good love good. and I love Canada. And I love oh. all the Canadians who are listening. And I know there will be some people uh, who aren't aren't Canadians who are listening. <laughs> I know they they want to be Canadians, and I I don't blame you. The whole world wants to live here, and. Uh, I am so grateful to this country for allowing my family and me uh, to come here a number of years ago. Uh, every day that I get to live in Canada is winning the jackpot, despite mm -hmm. all of the things that we've been talking about. Yeah. I am the luckiest person in the world uh, to be on Canadian soil, and, and I want to thank you for allowing me to, to say that and then share it with, with everyone that's paying attention right now. Yeah. We Thank completely you. agree. I feel the same way. I am so We're lucky. very lucky. I've traveled all over the world. I've been to India. I've been in, in several countries in sub-Saharan Africa. And every time I come home, I get that same feeling. I am the luckiest person alive to live in this country. We are so spoiled here. And so many of us don't even know it. Yeah. I have seen people literally in New Delhi that live under an overpass in the dirt and and they were the happiest people they weren't miserable they were happy they were happy they were alive and i come home and it's like we have all these trappings around us and we take it all for granted and sometimes we complain about it but once you travel the world and go to another country and see people who have less in their entire lives than you've had in the last six months or six weeks it really makes you appreciate how gloriously spoiled we are in this country. Well, uh, let's spoil him with some love tonight. Hell All yes. Right. Hell yes. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Take care, Charles. It's good to yes. see you. And we'll, we'll talk to you again soon. We'll talk to you soon. Oh, Canada. Thank right. you. Oh, Canada. Enjoy those sweet potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Wow. Are you kidding me right now? We're still recording, eh? I know. <laughs> You're gushing. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty amazing. Uh, that was a pretty amazing uh, uh, ten minutes. <laughs> like he said, ten minutes. It's it's ninety minutes. We we've been chatting with uh, Mr. Charles Adler, who has been incredibly uh, uh, gracious with his time, and uh, we've got a new friend. A uh, new friend of the show, new friend yes. that uh, I hope we'll get to chat to again sometime soon. And, and uh, love to have him back on because, I mean, we went deep and, and yeah. we got to the heart of the matter. It's like we are so privileged and lucky to live in this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but and, and I need to mention this. Vigilance. We, we must stay ever vigilant. We must this stay ever vigilant. This doesn't just happen. Yeah. It doesn't just happen. We have to stay vigilant. So, sir, if you would be so kind as to wrap us up. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Wow. What a gift that was. That kids. was incredible. That was incredible. Um, wow. I'm, uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm wound yeah, up. I'm really. very energized right now, but I got like a, a you know, that I've told you about I'm this before, that, that feeling I get the day after a great yoga session. Yeah. Around 10 a.m. the next day, you got this feeling, this blissful feeling that comes over you. That's what I'm yeah. feeling right now. I got a visual before we go. There was something that you were talking about, uh, and it made me think of this Charlie Brown cartoon at one point. You want to blow it up a little bit? Oh, can you? No, that's about as I big as you can get. Yeah, yeah, okay. Goodbye always makes my... Th no. Goodbyes always make my throat hurt. I need more hellos. Mm. That's a good one. Yeah. That's I remember good. seeing that one time like this and it just stuck with you. Never forgotten it. Yeah. It yeah. just stuck with me. All right. Ah, kids. Woo. And cubs. Woo. Okay. Oh, lots going on. Um, we hope uh, <laughs> that you enjoyed uh, this interview uh, with Charles Adler. Um, to be totally honest, kids, we really did think we were only going to have 10 minutes. And uh, actually, uh, we didn't get to say it while he was on, but uh, we actually like, strategized 
Yeah, we're like, okay, we've right. got 10 minutes. Let's see what we can ask this, this. We maybe have three questions. <laughs> you know, we'll do the best we can with the time we've got, you know, it's, and it yeah. turned into a, a really wonderful conversation, which yeah. is, as, as, as I said, as you said at the very top of the show, as, uh, you know, I love this medium because we can have a, an open, frank discussion. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, so we were looking for 10 minutes, which we were going to take and then insert on our weekend. <laughs> yeah, we're just, this is a whole show on its own now. <laughs> and, and ask people, you know, like, well, this is what Charles said. <laughs> it's like, what do you think? It's, our, it's its own show. It's its, so own. it's its own show. Uh, I might take a bit on uh, healthcare, uh -huh. uh, on healthcare and maybe find the clip and bring it to the other show if we have the time to figure yeah. that out. We'll but, see what uh, we can do. But yeah, wow. Uh, th this is so we have a bonus episode. Yes, we basically. do. This is awesome. Yes, yes this is great. Uh, well, kids, uh, that's the end of this uh, episode of, I guess, the uh, True North Eager Beaver interview project. There you uh, go. I don't remember <laughs> which number it is because I it's didn't relevant. plan for that. We'll, but we'll put it in the we'll we'll put it in the credits. We hope you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please let your peeps know about us and please let them know about this episode. Uh, like we often say, you know, we we often get to do very good episodes and we often get to do interesting episodes, but sometimes there are times you get to do episodes that are important and, and there are certain important. subjects that we talked to, to, yeah, that we touched upon. So, uh, that's a rare gift. Uh, so, um, and as, uh, Charles said, you know, this might help people. So, um, and that's please. what we want to do. We want to help people. Yes. So please, uh, do share it. Uh, if it resonated with you, please do share it. Please. Uh, because democracy is something that you do. Uh, wow. Um, Use your voice. We're, we're going we're gonna to say the same thing as we say the other episodes, right? Whatever it is, the subject that is, that is dear to your heart, that really matters, whatever it is, the injustice that you see going on, that, uh, you know, you want to address, then um, write. Write. Or speak. Or show up. Mm -hmm. Or just knock on a door and say, how can I help? What can I do? And, you know, this is something that Bo of the Fifth Column always says. You know, if you're sitting there at home and you think, I've, I've got nothing to provide, I've got no... You do. You do. Everybody has something that can yes. be put to use. Well, Everybody. It's it's like being a, you're a member of a team. It's just a bigger team. It's called the team Canada. Yep. The team Canada. There's a, there's a place for you. Everybody plays their role. Uh, if you really liked this podcast, you can find us on the Cryer Media Network, as well as all Beaver Grizzly friendly platforms. Stars and reviews are appreciated. We love to hear from you. So please reach us on our Facebook at True North Eager Beaver, uh, our Twitter feed at True Eager, or by email via True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com. Uh, you could subscribe to us via our pod page site. That's podpage.com slash the True North Eager Beaver. That's all in lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And if you happen to be listening to us on our YouTube channel, then uh, why not smash that button and subscribe to it? Uh, that helps us out big time. We're trying to get to at least 1,000 so that we can monetize it. So if you can help us out, that would be wonderful. Um, all right. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, until next time, dear kids, it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom for us before we go? Uh, actually, I do. Uh, uh, they're not... I'm going to be paraphrasing. They're not necessarily my words, but uh, because of, of the, the time we just spent with Charles and, and, and some of the things he was saying, it reminded me of the old saying, hate grows in the darkness, love shines a light. Shine the light of love. It'll kill the hate. I'm paraphrasing. I don't have the quote exact, but you know what I mean. All right. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, please roll the credits. You are listening to 
a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver Podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Thank you for the gift of your attention, kids. We really appreciate it. Take care.